Welcome to our homestead. We are glad you're here. We are continuing our series on installing our EG4 6500 EX inverters. Today we will be doing all the wiring and showing you just a few basic programming parameters to get you started. And then in the near future, we will be doing additional programming videos and load testing videos for this system. Let's get going with that wiring. So we had a nice cool day the other day and we ran our four gauge through our conduit in our attic and we cut back our original conduit as you can see up there to accommodate for this new setup on the wall. So first things first, we need to add our safety switch and then we need to add more flexible conduit for our other inverter and the safety switch. This stuff is super easy to cut with a razor blade. Just cut it to the length that you need it. So they have several different types of fittings for the ends. Buy what you think is necessary for what you need for your system. All the other electrical conduit I ran is one and a half inch. And we're only gonna have three wires running from each inverter because they're 120 volt inverter. So we will have one hot, a ground, and a neutral coming through this conduit. And then when we come to our load center, for us, this is a sub panel. We're running back to our main panel and I'll show you how to do that. When we come and land here, we are gonna land on a double pole 70 amp breaker. Let me show you all the tools that we are using for the project today. And if I accidentally leave one out, I will put a full list of them in the description below the video. So you're gonna need some wire strippers and wire cutters. This stripper is for large cable. This one's for smaller cable. These are probably the best cutters. They are insanely sharp. They're Japanese and they're amazing. Of course, screwdrivers, pliers, crimpers, and uh, razor blade cutters, potentially a ferrule crimper if you put ferrules on the ends of some of your wires as they go into the inverters. And then this bad boy right here, this is the crimper for your battery cable. And I told you I'd show you how to do that. So down here on the floor, got our terminals our, for our four op battery cable, our two op battery cable, and then we've got some heat shrink, We've got our crimper that needs to go on something solid. So we've got this weight here because if I try to do it on the floor, we destroy the floor. So get something super solid and you're gonna need a hammer to slam that thing to crimp those terminals onto the wire. And you need a heat gun to do that uh, heat shrink onto each of the wires. Then of course, socket set and whatever else you need to connect things like your batteries, etc. Make sure when you buy these three quarter inch connectors for your flexible conduit, you get the three quarter inch to one inch spacers because the holes are too big for these connectors on the inverter. So that's no big deal. These are like 50 cents, 60 cents a piece, something like that. Here's a little trick. This little plate for the PV connectors needs to come off for you to insert your PV wires. And that is because there is hardly any space to get your fingers in there to connect those PV wires to these terminals and taking this off is way easier. So take it off, slide it in there like that, let it hang, connect your wires, and then slide this up into place and screw it into the bottom of the inverter. So unlike the Growatts, these EG4s will run just off solar or just off the battery. So what we are going to do to start these up is connect the solar and then connect the batteries after that. The Growatts wouldn't do that. I'm not an electrician. I'm just trying to do this efficiently. I'm just a DIY guy. If you need to consult with an electrician, please do so. So I have a good friend who's an electrician and he taught me what to do. I did it on my old grow watt system, so I'm confident doing it on this one. So here I am with my main panel. You can see it's kind of a pain to get to, but this is the generator interlock kit. It doesn't allow the grid power to be on at the same time as the solar power. That solar power is coming in right here on this 70 amp breaker. I'll have the L1 and L2, the two hots, run from that sub panel. And it's one from each inverter, my ground and my neutral. And this is where I'm gonna make my ground neutral bond is in this panel and not the sub panel. And everything here is grounded out to our grounding rod and it's grounded to this panel. So I'm gonna get into this panel, connect these wires, make sure they're the proper length because I just yanked them through the ceiling. They're kind of all over the place. Then I can pull back the excess to the other spot. Again, that's how I'm doing it. That's how I was taught. Consult with an electrician if you need to. 
So make sure when you're running through your whole system back from your other breaker through your safety switch and to this breaker that the L1 and L2 remain consistent or you're gonna have problems. Everything's connected and you can see we've got slack in the wire. So I'm gonna go back the other direction and pull it. And I've got one of these knockout protectors here tightened down and that wire is not gonna pull out and go anywhere. Okay, our wire is pulled down through the attic properly. We've got it cut. We've got it in our safety switch, in our panel and onto our first inverter. Let me show you what I did. And then over here with this inverter, I'm gonna go through it again so you can see it as I do it. So depending on which safety switch you get, neutrals to neutrals, line one to line one, line two to line two, grounds to grounds, and so on. So down into here, we've got our neutral on our neutral bar, grounds are on our ground bar. These two grounds come over from each inverter. This is line one from one inverter line two from the other inverter. I kept them separate color. You can't have them both black, but I wanted to differentiate between the two so that I know by the color back to the main panel, which one it is. Over here, we have our battery cables all set. We've got our positive, positive, negative to negative. Positive comes down through our breaker and negative will go back to our negative bus bar. We've got our positive over to our positive bus bar. And that's the two watt cable. And then the other two aught will come from this inverter over to this bus bar. And then this is four aught cable over to the bus bar on our battery cabinet. All of our batteries are connected to that bus bar. And then obviously we'll be doing the same with the negative side. So I'm not gonna go over again with this build how to connect these batteries all together. I did that in the video linked at the top of the screen for my GrowWatt system. And for this first inverter that I connected, we have our hot, our line, our neutral in the neutral, and our ground in the ground. Now, these are extremely tight with the four gauge wire. If there's any deviation in the shape of the end of that wire, it's extremely difficult to get them into these terminals. And that is the same case with this square D panel. So I know that the electricians are probably saying, well, duh. So what I found a little trick is to leave the uh, insulation on until you are absolutely ready to perfectly push it through one of these holes. And that's the same thing I found with these Nader breaker terminals right here. That two watt cable barely fits in there. So you need to be gentle when you're putting it in there so the wires don't get all frayed or else it's gonna be extremely difficult. Okay, let's work on this inverter. There are three screws underneath right here that you need to remove, and then one on each end for this front panel to come off. Don't let this just fall down because there are three connection cables right here that you need to remove. So you don't want those to yank out. So you can see I left the insulation on these because you want them to be completely round and undamaged when you put them up into these terminals. Make sure you back that screw out as far as you possibly can to get it up in there. Now we'll move on to the battery cables and then we will connect the solar. So when you're doing your battery cable, you actually wanna put the gland on first because once you have your terminal end on there, especially on this black cable. It doesn't matter with the positive cable because you've got some open ends on that where it connects to the breaker. But on the negative cable, you're not gonna be able to get this gland over the top of your terminal end. So this has to go on the wire first. This is easy, just put it over the top on that line you just made. You can set the blade depth right here and run it around. Don't go too deep or you're gonna to cut too many strands. We're gonna put our heat shrink over the top first, put our terminal on, try to get all the strands in there. Usually if you put it at the side and kind of try to twist it a little bit, it has a flared bottom, so that helps. There. This crimper is spring-loaded. Place it inside. Push it together the best that you can. Hammer time. Push your heat shrink up just over that point, not too far up. And you'll need a heat gun to shrink that. 
Done. Do all your cables like that. Once you have your cable installed, we are going to measure for the breaker, cut that, and then insert it into the terminal on the breaker. But make sure you give everything a solid tug to make sure it's tightened properly. We are going to reconnect our front panel here. And there's no way you can mess this up. Each one of these connectors is different and they connect in a different place. Before I show you everything connected, we need to take this plate off right here, which exposes the paralleling ports, just like this over on this one. The paralleling cables have two different ends on them and so do the connection points on the bottom of the inverters. So there's no way you can screw it up. It goes outside to outside and inside to inside. So here we go. Here is our battery bank connected to the other bus bars here on the walls and our inverters batteries connected to those bus bars. We've got our PV connected to each inverter. We've got our communication paralleling cables right there and our AC outlines over to our load center, which is our sub panel, safety switch, and then back to our main panel. And we have additional breakers here between. We do have breakers on these batteries, but I'll show you how to start this up in a minute. So your system might look exactly like this, or it might look a little bit different, but the concepts are just the same. So if you are interested in any of this equipment, click on the link in the description below to Signature Solar. And that really helps out our channel a lot. So for our initial setup, we're gonna focus on three protocols. The first one is protocol 28, which is going to set these for split phase. The second is protocol five, which is going to tell it which batteries that we do have. And the last one is protocol one, which is we are going to set for our use solar battery utility in that order, SBU. So the best way to get the inverters to wake up in standby mode is to turn on your solar. So we've turned on the solar and you can see the inverters are not on. There's no colors going back here on this LED bar and the inverters are physically off, but we've got power to the screens and we need to get in here and change these so that they are split phase. So we're gonna go to protocol 28 first. Now this indicator here is telling me that I don't have any battery hooked up currently, which is correct. And I'm gonna go in the enter here. We can turn these beeps off later and it's kind of annoying, but now we've got into our uh, our options menu here, we're gonna scroll down to 28. And I've already done this, but we are going to set our master inverter as 2P1, and then we are gonna set the other inverter as 2P2. So this is our 2P2 over here, you can see it, and it's set at 180. So you want these 180 degrees out of phase. I don't know why it has a 120, but do not use the 120 use 180 2p2 so next is protocol 5 this is our 2p1 inverter and this battery is going to be set to eg4 so if we go in here and we see li6 lic agm i believe flooded lead acid you want to be on eg4 for the bat or the inverter that is connected to the battery via the cable so you can see our communications cable on this cable there is a little white label some of these cables are reversed so you're going to have to figure out which cable you have some you will put the little label next to the inverter right here but in my case the label is here next to my master battery plugged into the rs485 port so if you get an error 61 flashing and beeping on your inverters try that cable switch and it'll take care of the problem so here on my 2P2 inverter, we are gonna enter in and we are gonna set the battery on protocol five to user. So remember on your 2P1 inverter, set the battery to EG4 and any other inverter that you have paralleled to it, set it to user. We're gonna get out of that. We're gonna go up to number one, like I said before, and set it for solar battery utility. I didn't mention at the beginning of the video, but this is a crucial piece of equipment. You need a clamp meter for doing work like this. It's listed with the other tools below the video. So now I'm going to turn our batteries on and the first thing I need to do is turn on 
our external breakers, and then I am going to turn on our battery breakers. Each battery has its own pre-charge resistor inside and built in. And once I did that, you can see that our battery is indicated as being on right here, and that fault, that 6A uh, fault, I think it was, has disappeared. And you can see it indicates the batteries are charging. Well, that is the basic wiring and programming for the system. In the future, we're gonna do a little bit more on the programming, talk about that, and then do some load testing with it. I'm excited to have this thing up and running, and it was super easy to do. I know you can do it as well. Now go check out these videos right here, which is our entire playlist on our solar system installations on our homestead. Have a great day. We love you. See you next time. Bye.